everyone, or mahaba as we say in Morocco, welcome. My name is Erica El Halali and I will be going through how to make a Moroccan tajine today. One of my favorites. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go through what you need to make a tagine. So what is a tagine? The tagine comes from North Africa. It's very popular in Morocco, and that's where I first got introduced to it, and I fell in love with tagines. They're a clay pot, and what they do is they, ha they basically will stew whatever you put in it. So it allows you to be really creative. You can put whatever you have in your house, whether that's whatever meat you have, whatever spices you have, whatever vegetables you have. It allows you to be really resourceful. And the stewing is done at a low heat, and that really allows a lot of flavor to be infused in the food. And it's a really healthy way of cooking because you don't need to use a lot of oil um, or any other fat. It, it really keeps the, the meat nice and juicy, but you do it in a way that's very healthy. Now, not everybody has a tagine. I got mine in Morocco and brought it back with me. There, you can buy them online now. They are available. Um, it could be a good time for you to try something new. If you don't have a tagine in your house, you can also just use the same ingredients in a pan um, and make kind of like a stew you would in a pan. It won't be necessarily the exact same process, but it's similar. You can also use a slow cooker or um, if you do have a Dutch oven, you can use a similar process in there. I do think the, the nice thing about a tagine is it, it's a drier stew. It doesn't have as much liquid. Um, and I think that really helps infuse the flavor well. So if you can get a tagine, I highly recommend it. So now we're going to go through the spices now that we've gone over our tagine. Now I have chicken to make. So for chicken specifically, there's a few things I like to use. Some of these you can use in any tagine. Um, garlic is something I probably use in all of my cooking. I think it tastes really good. It has a lot of good health benefits. Um, we have granulated garlic. If you have garlic powder, if you can get fresh garlic, however you can get it, it adds a lot of great flavor to whatever dish you're making. The next one is coriander, and this one is used heavily in Morocco. It is very, it's, um, it's similar to cilantro. It's from the same plant, uh, but it's a ground, it's ground down, and I actually prefer uh, coriander like this versus cilantro. The next one is paprika. Paprika is very commonly used in Morocco. You, you can also use smoked paprika. Right now, I just have some regular organic paprika, so this is what I'll be using. It adds a lot of flavor to the dish, but not spicy flavor. It gives you a little bit of a taste without being overpowering. The other spice that I use in pretty much everything I make is parsley. I know a lot of people think, oh, there's not a lot of flavor to it. Parsley really adds a nice, um, freshness to a dish. It also gives you some good um, vitamins and I, I pretty much use it in everything. I love parsley. I highly recommend it. And you can use fresh parsley if you have it. Right now we just have the dried parsley so that's what we'll be using. Now specifically because we are cooking with chicken I will add turmeric and turmeric is you can get it in a nice powder like this um, it'll add a nice color to the dish, but it just adds a nice uh, flavor and it, it has some good health benefits too. So it's a good way to cook with turmeric. And what my mother-in-law, who is a Moroccan woman, told me 
when I first started learning how to cook was make sure that you use turmeric is really good with chicken and fish. So whatever fish or chicken dishes you have, if you have salmon, any white fish, turmeric goes really well with it. It goes good with turkey too. So whatever kind of uh, poultry, white meat you have, um, or fish, turmeric is a good option. Now, if you're cooking with red meat, so beef or lamb, or you know, if you have venison, whatever kind of red meat you have, cumin is very, very good with red meat. It adds a nice earthiness to it. It's great with any type of red meat you have. So if you are gonna cook a tagine with red meat, I highly recommend cumin. Since I'm using chicken, I will not use cumin. The other spice I like to use is freshly ground black pepper. Now, if you can get one that's like in one of these containers and you can freshly ground it, it just um, adds a lot more flavor. You don't have to use as much than if you use the one that's already ground. So especially as we're all trying to uh, conserve our resources during these times, it's a good way to conserve the pepper you have if you can just grind it fresh versus getting it already ground. Then salt, salt is in pretty much everything, and I'm sure most of you have it at your house. It does add a nice flavoring, um, but because we're using so many other flavors, you don't have to use too much salt in a, in a tagine because there's a lot of other flavor profiles going on here. Um, but you still want a little bit, so, but if you're conscious of your health, you don't have to use as much. Now within that sauce, you can also use olive oil. Right now I have some extra virgin olive oil from California where we're located. And this is great. You can put it in any sauce, any dish. Um, olive oil is great. And you don't have to use a lot of it. The dry stewing process in the tagine allows you to just use a little bit of the olive oil, um, but still get that flavor that you need from the oil. For this specific dish we're making today, I looked in my fridge and I saw what kind of vegetables do I have. I have onion, I have some green beans, and I've already cleaned and um, chopped off the ends of those. I have some baby carrots, and I have some green olives. Um, so I'll be using these in addition to the chicken that I have. Um, the chicken that I have are chicken thighs. This is a good way if you're trying to save money. It is a lot cheaper than buying chicken breast. And especially in a dish like a tagine, it'll add a lot more flavor because there's naturally more fat in this meat versus the chicken breast. Um, these are also what I could find. I did not find chicken breast in my local grocery store. I found this, so that's what I bought. So that's really the beauty of the tagine. You can take whatever ingredients you can find right now, use those. Um, I know a lot of times I'll use potatoes in here. I've used, um, you can put okra, you can put all kinds of different vegetables in a tagine that make it really good. All right, so now we're going to start making our ingredients. So I have taken the chicken out of the package. I rinse off the meat that I have um, when I buy it from the grocery store. I rinse it off. That just keeps it clean and if there's any germs or anything like that, they just rinse off. Um, when you cook, the germs will get cooked off anyway, so don't feel like you need to cook it or wash it thoroughly the cooking process will take care of the germs. After you touch the raw chicken, make sure you wash your hands again, and um, then you can get started. So I've just placed them in right at the bottom. With the tagine, you want the meat to be placed in at the bottom. Now what I like to do first is I'll take the garlic first, and if I had um, raw garlic, I would maybe do that last, but because this is a powder, I'll put the powdered ingredients on first. And I just sprinkle it over, and you're gonna just cover it as evenly as possible. Um, there will be a sauce, so if it's not evenly covered, it's not a big deal. So now we're gonna do the coriander. If you did have red meat, you could do cumin or whatever you needed to. I'm gonna do paprika. Um, I don't put that much coriander on there, but I like a lot of paprika, so I'll put more paprika on there than the other ingredients. Then I like to put the parsley on. And one thing I will be doing is I'll be actually doing layers of spices. So this won't be the first time or the last time that we put these spices on. We have that turmeric, and you'll see that beautiful yellow full color from turmeric. 
Turmeric actually does better in your body if you have pepper with it. Um, there's something in the pepper that actually helps activate the turmeric. I'll sprinkle just a little bit of salt on there too just to get that process started. So then while all the ingredients are just sitting like that, I'll just drizzle a little bit of this extra virgin olive oil on top. You'll see I didn't put a lot, I just kind of drizzled it on there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the onion so the way that I cut an onion, I take off one of the, either the top or the bottom first. Um, it also helps you, you can look at the onion, make sure that it's still fresh and everything. Um, you'll see around the whole way, it's still a good onion. And then I'll just cut it in half. And I do actually, um, I, I'll save the rest of this onion for later. Uh, especially now we're trying to ration our, our supplies so you don't really need to do more than a half of an onion if you want to put a whole onion in there you definitely can all right so now I'll just cut this in half and with that I'll take off just the outside of the onion the skin I'm gonna get all of that outside off and you can put that to the side and then you can just thinly slice this onion I'm just doing it in strips and put it in with the meat like this. And you just sprinkle it over the top. And that's a fourth of the onion. And then we'll put in the other one here in a second. And just put it right in there. So now you're ready for the first round of cooking. With the tagine, you always want to cook the meat and the onions first and really get that cooked well just to make sure the meat gets nice and cooked well. And then we can go to our vegetables later. So for now, we're just going to let this uh, sit on the stove, simmer for a little bit longer. Um, and then once it's ready, we will go to the vegetables and the other parts of the tagine. As you can see behind me, the tagine is still cooking. So I'll get our vegetables ready. Um, you can cook it where the baby carrot would be full, but I actually prefer if you just do a quick slice down the middle, just like that, and that just makes it for better presentation. You can play around and do this however you want to, but it's nice because there's a flat side. It'll lay nicely in the tagine itself. So while we're cutting the carrots and waiting for the meat to cook more, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of Morocco. So Morocco is very unique in the world. It has kind of been at the crossroads of a lot of different cultures, a lot of different civilizations, and that's really impacted their cooking. So when I first went to Morocco, it was in 2006, and while I was there, I learned about the history, I learned the language, the culture, and really I fell in love with Moroccan cuisine. And the thing about Moroccan cuisine is people will use whatever they have. So it's a very resourceful and ingenious way of cooking because whether they were trading with other, other civilizations, getting new ingredients, whether that was a new spice on the, from the Silk Road, whether that was new ingredients being imported, they really took whatever ingredients were introduced to them and find a way to use it in the cuisine that they were making. So it's been heavily influenced by Spain, which is just right to the north. You can actually stand in Morocco and you know look across the Mediterranean and see Spain, um, which is a beautiful experience. I highly recommend it. Um, they also have been heavily influenced by Arab traders who came in on the Silk Road. So a lot of the spices that you see in Moroccan cooking were on the Silk Road at one point in time. Um, and then they also are very heavily rooted in Africa. So the indigenous population of Morocco is Berber or Amazir. And the Berbers are a group of people who um, are uh, traditionally, they, they, they were agricultural. Um, they went from nomads to agricultural over time. And so they grew a lot of produce and then they found ways to cook it. So depending upon which part of Morocco you're in, if you go to by the ocean, you'll see people cooking more with fish. If you go into the mountains, you'll actually see a lot of cooking with different meat or beans or whatever they have. They're, they'll be resourceful with it. And one of the nice things about a tagine is it has this little lid on top and you can actually put your spoon right there. So you don't have to worry about getting your stove dirty. So it's a very tricky little piece, um, uh, a tidbit that you can learn about the tagine that's nice. I'm going to 
uh, open the tagine. I put a glove on just because it does get a little bit hot. Now the meat has cooked nicely with the onions and we're going to put our other vegetables in it to continue cooking. We're actually going to just start by putting the carrots around the chicken like this. And I like to make them more presentable so I stand them up like this. And that's where if you cut it on the flat side they stick um, nicer than if you just keep them round. And you just go around the whole circle of the tagine. So now you just stir the spices up with the tomato sauce and I just spoon it over the top and it'll drip down into the rest of the dish um, but it'll just give it some more flavor it'll add flavor for the carrots um, so I'll just do a little bit of a layer in with the carrots so the green beans you don't have to do maybe as precise as the carrots you can just kind of layer them on top and these will steam very nicely with the carrots and the chicken. Oh, I found one other little end that I missed. I'm gonna take these off. And then you'll see this green beans a little bit bad. I'm just gonna take this off. Green beans I give a lot of extra protein, um, but they give you a lot of good fiber. And they're also just add a nice fresh element. Um, Tajines tend to be very earthy dishes, and so sometimes it's nice to have a fresher green vegetable and the olives will add a nice element to, of saltiness to the dish. They also are really really um, have a, got a lot of good good healthier fats for you um, so they're they're really good and they're also my son who's almost two one of his favorites so whatever I can try to cook with green olives I do. So now I'm going to do the rest of the sauce on top just kind of drizzle it over like we did with the carrots, you just want to make sure the sauce gets um, in everything, that flavor gets throughout the dish um, out as it's stewing in the pot. I'm just going to dump out the little amount that's left. So now the tagine is done cooking, I put it on a pot because it is a little bit hot on the bottom. And you, when you pull off the lid, you'll see some steam rise out of it. You'll see that beautiful steam. You can smell it, it smells really good, all those spices, the chicken, it smells, it smells really lovely. And in Morocco, they'll actually eat it with bread, so they'll actually share it and dip, the, dip into the dish with bread. You can also put it on a dish on the side, and that may be easier, it's more of an American way of cooking. Um, right now, it's probably a little bit more sanitary too with everything going on. So we will let this cool just a little bit. You don't want it to get cold, but you don't want it to be steaming hot either. And then it is ready to eat. Thank you, or shukran, as they say in Morocco. Um, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to uh, reach out and let me know. And hopefully this will be something fun you could do with your family as we're all stuck inside. Thank you.